Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us. My name is Stacy Carter. Uh, I am the supervisor of registration unit one, and I'm going to be your host today regarding um, SB 1013 and SB 353, um, and it's um, and how it's going to be applied and used by the California Beverage Container and Litter Reduction Act, specifically for beverage manufacturers and distributors. Of course, we have some housekeeping we have to take care of first. Of course, I'm going to be speaking to you in English. However, if you feel that you need Spanish interpretation, at the bottom of your Zoom screen, there is a little icon. It has this little globe on it. It says interpretation. If you would prefer to listen to this in Spanish, go ahead and switch the channel over to Spanish, and there will be an interpreter repeating everything I say in Spanish for you. So our agenda for today um, is going to cover quite a bit of um, information as it relates to beverage manufacturers and distributors. We're going to start out, though, with some introductions. I'm going to let you know who's going to be speaking and about what topics. We're going to go over how to submit questions, um, provide you an overview of Senate Bill 1013 and Senate Bill 353 and the changes that they've made. We're gonna go over program basics so that you understand exactly what's going on with CRV and processing fees and the responsibilities around those items. We're gonna discuss registration and the process. And then we're also gonna get into labeling and account maintenance, reporting and payment basics. And finally, at the end, we're gonna actually give you a demonstration on how to submit your reports and payments through our reporting system called Doris. So we're gonna start um, by introducing some folks. In just a second, uh, Amy Cameron, our Assistant Director over the Division of Recycling will give us some opening remarks. I will go over SB 1013 and SB 353, the changes those have created, go over the program, um, give you an overview and talk about the registration of beverage manufacturers and distributors. At that point, I'm gonna hand off to Rachel Manford she is a supervisor over registration unit two, and she's gonna discuss labeling requirements and provide some examples for you. From there, I will hand off to Shamila Tucker. She is the supervisor over participant management unit. She's gonna discuss with you account maintenance, ongoing reporting and payment requirements, and also show you that demonstration on our reporting system. And then finally, at the end, we are going to read your questions and try to provide as many answers as we can um, at the end of the presentation. So we'll start out with Amy with some opening remarks. Thank you, Stacy. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us today for this presentation, which we have geared for small wineries. First off, I would like to welcome you to the Beverage Container Recycling Program. We have been collecting beverage containers for almost 40 years, and the addition of wine and distilled spirits to the program is the largest expansion since its inception, both in terms of the number of beverage manufacturers and distributors joining the program, as well as the number of containers we expect to see um, due to glass. We know many of you have very specific questions, and today we will answer as many as time allows and where we have the answers. Having said that, some questions may need us to research, and we are committed to working with you and providing you with responses. We will either have a frequently asked questions that we will post on our website, or we will schedule an additional webinar to answer the specific questions that we needed to go back and research so we can provide you with, with the answers you need. BCRP has a great and committed staff and many are here joining us today to, to hear your questions and answers and they will be working with you in this program. We are excited to work with you, but it is imperative if you have not done so already, that you begin the registration process. Today's presentation is going to provide you with information on how to participate as a beverage manufacturer or distributor. 
And our question and answer session following the presentation will focus on questions related to beverage manufacturers and distributors. Again, thank you for joining us on this Friday morning. I hope it is sunny where you are. We're finally getting a little sun here in Sacramento and I hope that spreads to all of you as well. So I'm gonna turn it back over to Stacy and look forward to our continued engagement. Thank you, Amy. Okay, let's get started. Um, so we will be taking questions um, during the presentation. We were hoping that you keep your questions on topic. We're talking about beverage manufacturers, beverage distributors, and CRV labeling. Please use the Q&A button located on the bottom of your Zoom screen. It says Q&A. Go ahead and type in your questions. We will do our best at the end of the presentation to read them and answer them as long as they're on topic and kind of general. If it's very specific to you and your company, we'll likely have to get back to you and answer that offline. So let's begin by highlighting the changes made by both Senate Bill 1013 and Senate Bill 353, specific to beverage manufacturers and distributors. We're gonna highlight it first and then I'm gonna dig down a little bit deeper into the points that I make. So Senate Bill 1013 was approved by Governor Newsom on September 27th of 2022. This legislative bill, effective January 1st, 2024, brings in wine and distilled spirits into the California Beverage Container Recycling Program. It added wine and distilled spirit coolers with any percentage of alcohol by volume. It added some new container materials along with a corresponding new CRV rate for those materials and it outlines when all new beverages must have a CRV message on the container. Senate Bill 353 was approved about a year after that. Governor Newsom signed that on October 13th of 2023. This bill brought in all fruit and vegetable juices regardless of their size. They came into the program effective January 1st, 2024. SB 353 exempts some tasting room bottles from CRV reporting and payment. It exempts specific beverage containers from CRV labeling indefinitely. And it changed the definition of beverage manufacturer under our act. So effective January 1st, 2024, the Beverage Container Litter Reduction Act includes a whole bunch of new beverages. SB 1013 brings in wine, sparkling, and carbonated, or wine from which alcohol has been removed in whole or in part. These are your standard wines, your Merlots, your Chardonnays, your proprietary blends. It also includes any kind of sparkling California wine or champagne. If you have a facility that actually produces a non-alcoholic wine or removes the alcohol from the wine, those are also included under this wine category. Um, this category also includes hard ciders, like hard apple ciders, would be included under the wine. SB 1013 brings in distilled spirits. These are your vodkas, your gins, your whiskeys, your tequilas. All of those kinds of spirits are now covered under the program, um, effective January 1st, 2024. SB 1013 also made a change to the definition of wine cool, wine and distilled spirit, spirit coolers. Um, prior to SB 1013, wine coolers and distilled spirit coolers were in the program, but it was only up to a certain threshold of alcohol by volume. That maximum amount of alcohol by volume has been stricken from the law, which now means that any product containing wine or spirits that has juices, flavorings, sugars, waters, anything added to it is, are now in the program um, under this new, um, this change. This includes all of your ready to mix a drink mixed cocktails. So if you have a ready to drink margarita, a ready to drink rum punch, uh, a sangria that you have wine that you've added fruits and juices to after the fact, those are all gonna fall under this new wine cooler category. Um, so ready to drink cocktails, brand new and exciting. SB 353 also brings in some new categories and that is 100% fruit juice, 46 ounces or more and 100% vegetable juice above 16 ounces. 
fruit and vegetable juice were in the program before, but only for limited sizes. This has removed those size requirements. So all fruit and vegetable juices are now covered under the program. And wine and distilled spirits, when they are packaged in box, bladder, pouch, or similar are now covered under the program. So if you have a wine that's in a box with a bladder and a spout, that is now going to be covered under our program. If you have a freestanding Tetra pack that contains wine or spirits, that's going to be in the program. The box bladder pouch containers are specific to wine and distilled spirit products. So the other products that are in wine and uh, that are in boxes and uh, pouches will not be in. As a consumer, when you go to the grocery store and you go to the back and you're looking for orange juice, orange juice in a carton is still not covered under our program. Boxes are only included when it has these new wine and spirit categories. For the wine and distilled spirits box, bladder and pouch, there is a new California redemption value deposit rate and that is 25 cents. This is for all boxes, bladders and pouches containing wine and distilled spirits and it doesn't matter the size. If it's in one of these new materials, it will be a 25 cent CRV deposit. SB 353 made a very significant change to the definition of beverage manufacturer. We had not seen a big change in this definition in decades, um, so this was quite a big change for us. On the screen, you see two different sections of, public, of the public resource code. You see 14506 and also 14575. These two sections together make up the entirety of our beverage manufacturer definition. Within this, there are five different things that can make you a beverage manufacturer. The blue section is what is new. And I'm gonna read section B for you just so you can hear it. For a beverage container containing beer, wine, or distilled spirits, the beverage manufacturer is the person who holds the license from the Department of Alcoholic Beverage Control authorizing the manufacture of the beer, wine, or distilled spirits, regardless of whether that person contracts with a third party to bottle, can, or otherwise fill the beverage container. What I want you to take away from this slide, and we're gonna dig into this a little bit more in a few slides, but what I want you to take away from this slide is if you hold an ABC manufacturing license, which allows you to produce an alcohol here in California, you are the beverage manufacturer by our definition. SB 353 wrote in an exemption for certain tasting room bottles. CRV is not required to be reported and paid on bottles opened and poured for tastings on site at your business location. So if you are a winery and you do wine tastings at your facility, those bottles that you opened and poured specifically for those tastings will not have CRV reported and paid on them. CRV labeling and SB 353 exemptions. SB 1013 initially required all wine and distilled spirits offered for sale in California to be labeled with a CRV message by July 1st of 2025. SB 353 went back and created some limited exemptions to that labeling requirement. Now we're going to walk through public resource code 14561F1, sections A, B, and C, and we're going to go through A, B, and C separately so that I can explain to you what each section means and how it might apply to you. So for CRV labeling on all new beverage categories, so this section applies to everything, notwithstanding any other requirement of the section, all of the following shall apply. Section A, a beverage container that is included within the scope of this division beginning on January 1st of 2024, but that was not subject to the division prior to that date shall be exempt from labeling requirements until July 1st of 2025. It's a lot of legalese and it's a little hard to absorb. So what does this mean for you? It means that CRV, a CRV labeling message is optional but not required between January 1st, 2024 through June 30th, 2025. This is your transition period. 
This is the period that you need to be working to get CRV messaging onto your containers. So you can sell them right now without it, but you need to be working your way towards it during this 18 month period. Except for the exclusions outlined in section B and C, which we are going to discuss in just a minute, most wine and distilled spirit containers will need to have a CRV label by July 1st of 2025. Section B discusses CRV labeling exemptions for wine and distilled spirits. So section B states a beverage container that is included within the scope of this division on January 1st, 2024, but that was not subject to the division before that date and that was filled and labeled before January 1st, 2024, shall be exempt from labeling requirements of this section. So what this means for you is that wine and distilled spirits bottled prior to January 1st, so anything bottled in 21, 22 that you have sitting in your warehouse, they do not require a CRV label ever. You don't have to go back you don't have to go back to the stock that's sitting in your warehouse that was bottled a couple years ago. These items do not require a CRV message to be added. They are, you do have to, you have to report and pay CRV when you sell them, but you don't have to go back and put that CA CRV message on the container. And finally, section C talks about exemptions for large fruit and vegetable juices. A beverage container containing a beverage described in paragraph seven or nine of subdivision A of section 14504 that is included within the scope of the division beginning January 1st, 2024, but that was not subject to the division before that date and was filled and labeled prior to July 1st, 2024, shall be exempt from labeling. It's a mouthful. Uh, what this means is that large fruit and vegetable juice bottled prior to July 1st of 2024, that's this upcoming July, do not require a CRV message. So anything that's currently sitting on the shelf does not require a CRV message to be added. It doesn't require one ever. So your previously bottled stock um, or things that are you, you're bottling right now, they don't need that message added um, until after July 1st, if you're, until you're doing bottling after July 1st. Excuse me. All right, in summary, those past three slides, CRV labeling is not required for your older stock. So for wine and distilled spirits, anything bottled prior to January 1st, 2024, you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to get it labeled. For large fruit and vegetable juices bottled prior to July 1st of 2024, you don't have to go back and label it. You don't need to add a message. Please remember that products that do not qualify for the labeling exemptions must have a CRV message on or after July 1st of 2025. We are suggesting for our best labeling practices for wine and distilled spirits, anything that you're bottling this year in 2024, we're suggesting that you add that CRV message to it. For large and fruit, fruit and vegetable juices, we suggest adding a CRV message to any product that you're bottling during the second half of 2024. So anything that you're bottling after July 1st. All right, so those were the changes that were made by 1013 and 353. We're gonna now go over some program basics, just so you have a full understanding of what our program's about and the responsibilities that you might hold. There are two entities who have responsibility to report and pay into our fund. That is the beverage manufacturer and the beverage distributor. Now, a company may be a program participant as a beverage manufacturer, or you might be a participant as a beverage distributor. You could be both, or you might be neither. All of this depends on your business practices regarding manufacturing, importing, and sales of beverages in California. We're going to start with the beverage manufacturer. I'm going to read through the five different points that might that will make you a beverage manufacturer, and I'm going to try to give you a little bit more information so hopefully you have a full understanding of it. So for the purpose of paying processing fees and ensuring CRV labeling compliance, 
The beverage manufacturer is a person or entity who meets one or more of the following five criteria. For beer, wine, or distilled spirit beverages that are produced here in California, the beverage manufacturer is the entity who holds the California Department of Alcoholic Beverage Control manufacturing license. So if you were licensed through ABC to produce wine, to produce spirits, or to produce beer here in California, you are the beverage manufacturer. It doesn't matter if you bottle it yourself. It doesn't matter if you have a mobile bottle or come to your facility and put it in your bottles. It doesn't matter if you put it on a truck in bulk and send it to a contract bottler. If the product is being produced under under your manufacturing license, you are the beverage manufacturer. Now, for products that don't require an ABC license, such as water, soft drinks, sports drinks, coffee, and tea drinks, the beverage manufacturer is the entity who bottles, cans, or fills the container in California. Well, if you're a large company and you're doing one of these and you're bottling your own product, great, you're bottling, you're the beverage manufacturer. This can get a little bit uh, interesting when a company owns a brand or a formula and they hire a contract bottler to fill it. In the situation where a contract bottler is filling the container for a brand owner, the contract bottler in this situation would be the beverage manufacturer responsible for ensuring the processing fees get paid. A beverage manufacturer is anyone importing beverages into California for sale to distributors, dealers, or consumers. So if you are bringing beverages into California for resale, it could be alcohol, it could be a non-alcoholic product. If you are importing those products to be resold, you will be the beverage manufacturer by our definition. Now we understand that most people that are importing or entities that are importing are, are often not the brand owner. They're often don't hold responsibilities to the label. However, based on the California definition, at the point that you bring those products into California, you take on the responsibilities as a beverage manufacturer. There are also two ways for an entity that is headquartered or located outside of California to hold responsibility. If an entity holds a certificate of compliance with the Department of Alcoholic Beverage Control, they are the beverage manufacturer based on the definition. A certificate of compliance is specific for beer and malt, and it's issued to an entity who is shipping into California. So if you do hold one of a COC, you will be registered as a beverage manufacturer for sending that product into California. And finally, the fifth point that would make you a beverage manufacturer under our definition is an out-of-state entity holding a wine direct shipper's permit with the California Alcoholic Beverage Control. These are out-of-state wineries who are sending a wine club or offering online sales direct to California consumers. If you hold this license, which the number is an 82, if you hold an 82 and you're sending into California to a California consumer, you will be the beverage manufacturer responsible for processing fees. Now, a distributor is anyone who does one of the following. They have to report and pay the CRB bottle deposit to us uh, when you have been identified as a beverage distributor. So a beverage distributor is anyone who sells a beverage container to a dealer in California. So if you happen to be a winery and you are selling to the grocery store down the street or the local liquor store directly, you would be a beverage distributor by our definition because you're selling to a dealer. A distributor is also anyone who imports a beverage from outside of California who resells it to a dealer or a consumer. So in this case, the person would be a beverage manufacturer for importing and would be the distributor on the item sold to a dealer or directly to a consumer. You would be a beverage distributor uh, if you hold a direct wine shippers permit with ABC. In this case, you are also, you would be the beverage manufacturer as pointed out on the previous slide, you would also be the beverage distributor uh, for those items going to California consumers. And finally, a beverage manufacturer or a brand owner selling direct to a California consumer. So a winery who is selling direct to a consumer in their tasting room, there's no middleman in there. When you make that sale, you are the distributor when you're selling to the consumer. 
Now, beverage manufacturers are responsible, responsible for paying processing fees. So what are processing fees? Processing fees are paid by the manufacturer to help offset the cost of recycling the container. So our goal here is once a consumer is finished with their beverage and they have this empty container, we want that container to be recycled, reused, and made into something else. When, it take, when they take it to the recycling center, the recycling center has to process it. And, you know, people don't do things for free or if they're losing money. These places have to pay for, you know, overhead and employee costs, and then it gets moved over to the processor that also has those types of things. If an entity was losing money, they wouldn't do it. It would end up in the waste stream. It would end up in the landfill. These fees are paid to help offset those costs so that the container will make it to the end and hopefully be made into something else rather than going into the landfill. Processing fee rates based on container material. So glass has its own rate. Plastic one has a rate. Plastic two has a rate. There are seven different types of plastic and each and every one of those plastics have its own rate. Processing fees change each and every calendar year. Every year they are recalculated based on a very complicated formula and every year there will be a new posting for the next calendar year. When it comes to reporting and paying processing fees, the size does not matter. It's based on the container material. So for example, wineries, if you have a split or a small glass container like a, a dessert wine or a port, and you have your standard 750s, and you have your mags, and you have your double mags. If they're all glass, you're gonna pay the same rate for the split as you are for the double mag. It's based on container material and not the size of the container. 2024 rates, um, like I said, there's one for each type of material. I've shown you probably the three most popular ones or ones used most often by the industry. Glass for 2024 is 0.00576. Plastic one, 0.0011. Box equivalent, 0.00697. As you can see, these more popular containers um, are a fraction of a penny each, and they would be paid on each individual container. Right. Distributors are responsible to collect and submit the CRV minus a 1.5% administrative fee discount. So the, what is CRV? Well, CRV is our bottle deposit. It's the consumer incentive for them to take it to the recycler and to have it have the opportunity to get made into something else. CRV, when collected by the distributor at the point of sale, is a pass-through. So when you sell the product to the dealer, you can choose to collect that CRV. They will get their money back when they sell it to the consumer and the consumer will get their money back when they take it to the recycler. As a distributor, you are responsible for submitting these fees. If you fail to collect it, choose not to collect it. You are still responsible for reporting and paying this fee on the sales uh, that you made. The administrative fee, of 1.5% is a rebate. It is automatically deducted from your total amount due. You will see this when you see the demonstration on reporting and payment near the end of the presentation. It's automatically deducted. For smaller producers, it's not gonna amount to a lot, but if you are a large company, it adds up fairly quickly. CRV rates vary, and they vary based on both size and material. So for glass, plastic, aluminum, and bimetal, the standard types of containers that you've already seen in our program as a consumer, um, those rates are five and 10 cents. So the smaller containers, anything from zero up to 23.9 ounces, will have a five cent CRV bottle deposit. Any of the glass, plastic, aluminum, or bimetal that is 24 ounces or above will be 10 cents. A standard wine bottle at 750 ml is a tick over 25 uh, ounces, so you will be paying the 10 the 10 cent uh, rate when you're reporting those. You will also be paying the 10 cent rate if you have mags or double mags, anything over that 24 ounces. For box, bladder, and pouch, 
And again, this is for wine and spirit box bladder and pouch only. The rate is 25 cents. It does not matter the size when it comes to box bladder and pouch. If it's in one of these new containers, 25 cents. It can be a single serve little box that looks like a kid's juice box. It could be a large box that has a bladder with a spout. Doesn't matter, 25 cents. All right, so you've listened to the definitions. You've heard a little bit about it. You probably have a pretty good idea if you're one or both of our entities. Are you a beverage manufacturer? Are you a distributor? Are you both? So now we need to get those beverage manufacturers and distributors registered. To do this, we need you to complete a registration form. So if you're a company that holds a manufacturing license, you need to fill one of these out. If you're importing product into California, beverages into California, you need to fill one of these out. You hold a wholesaler license and you're selling to dealers, you need to fill one of these out. It's going to ask a bunch of basic question. What is your legal name? What is your doing business name? Where are you located? Who are we going to talk to? What kind of products are you doing? This form has not been designed specifically for wine and spirits. It's a form that we use for all the entities that need to be in our program. So some of the things may seem a little odd. Um, do your best to fill it out. We can always ask you more questions later. There is one question on here that states, what date did you begin sales in California? For wine and spirits, what this question is asking is when did you start selling beverages covered under the act? And that answer is January 1st of 2024. I don't need to know that you opened your winery in 1985. January 1st, 2024 will be your reporting start date. If you do tell me that you started selling beverages in 1985, we're gonna change that for you. All right, and when should I complete the form? Well, wine and spirits are already in. We are in February, so as soon as possible. To find the registration form, um, you can just go to Google, put in beverage manufacturer and distributor. You're gonna find our beverage distributor and manufacturer homepage. And this is the page that you need to find the registration form. Of course, you can type in this address, which is calrecycle.ca.gov forward slash bev container forward slash bev dist man. That will take you to our page. If you wanna go directly to the registration portion of that page, hashtag registration will take you right there. Once you're on that page, you're gonna see the top is gonna to look something like this with our name. This green band that says beverage distributors and manufacturers, this is how you know you landed on the right page. Scroll down to the middle of the page. In the middle of the page, you're gonna see this mint green band in the middle and two blue hyperlinks. The first is a registration form that's our online version. You type directly into it. When you hit submit, we capture the information. We also get an email of the information. You get an email that says you have submitted along with the information that you typed in. So you know exactly what you wrote. If you go back tomorrow, you're like, did I say that correctly? You can go back and take a look at it. We prefer you to submit this way. However, if you want to look at the questions first, you want somebody else to fill it out, there is also a PDF version, which you can open and type directly into or download and print and handwrite on it. This can be faxed back, scanned and emailed back or put in the mail. We'll take it any way you want to give it to us. Like I said, we would prefer the online version. It makes it a little easier. But if you prefer this other method, it's available should you want it. All right, once your registration has been assigned to an analyst, your form will be reviewed. They'll take a look at it, determine if they have enough information. If not, they're gonna be contacting you and asking you additional questions. If you meet one or both definitions, you will be assigned an account number or account numbers, along with an account representative who will be your dedicated person for questions regarding reporting and payment. The registration unit will continue to assist you with CRV labeling and questions associated with labeling. However, your account, your file will be moved over to our sister unit, the participant management unit. They will be doing ongoing maintenance for you. And you'll learn a little bit more about that in just a few minutes. 
So we need to let you know, um, there are a lot of wineries in California. There's a lot of importers in California and we have a lot to get through. As of January 1st, we have over 3,100 beverage manufacturers registered in our system and active. We have um, almost 3,100 distributors in our system. However, even though that sounds great, we have around 2,300 registration applications in the queue. They're in line to be processed, and we are trying to get through them, but there is a backlog, so be prepared for that. Processing fees and CRV payments are required for all of your California sales beginning January 1st of 2024. So if you have not yet submitted a registration or your registration is still in line to be processed, we recommend that you collect and set aside the CRV because you're gonna need to go back and re retroactively pay that going back to January 1st. So be prepared, set it aside. Now, if you submitted timely, a delay in your the completing of your registration or processing your access to, to do the reporting on our, our from our side will not result in a penalty. So if you submit on time, we're gonna get you through the queue um, and you won't get a penalty because of our mistake, okay, or our delay. That's um, all of our program basics and the SB 1013, SB 353 changes. I'm now gonna hand off to Rachel Manford and she is going to go over labeling requirements and some examples. Thank you, Stacey. Good morning, I'm Rachel Manford, uh, supervisor over the registration unit two. Um, I will be going over the beverage container labeling requirements as they pertain to the beverage container recycling program referred to in short as the BCRP, which you've heard several times. Next slide. Okay, CRV labeling. All beverage manufacturers, including wine and spirit manufacturers, must meet the labeling requirements of Public Resources Code 14561 and California Code of Regulations 2200. Okay. Wine and distilled spirit manufacturers not, are not required to submit labels for approval and may request assistance and our label review to ensure compliance. If you are in doubt or just want verification that your labels comply, we encourage you to request assistance. We are here to help and albeit it's it's not as fast as what we're accustomed to, but we are working on it as fast as we can. So thank you for your patience. Next slide. Okay, CRV labeling is optional for new beverages. January 1st, 2024, to June 30th, 2025. This is our transition period. So, okay, it is optional, thank you. So and here are the five accepted CRV message options. A beverage manufacturer as defined by the BCRP shall clearly indicate on all beverage con containers pursuant to Public Resources Code 14561A no monetary value should be included with the message. So California redemption value, CA redemption value, California cash refund, CA cash refund, and CA CRV are acceptable. Next slide, please. So CRV labeling size and location requirements. The CRV message must be clearly, prominently, and indelibly marked pursuant to California Code of Regulations to 2200B. So clearly meaning the message should be easy to see, read, and understand. It should not be obscured or hidden. The text on the label should be legible and not subject to misinterpretation. Prominently meaning the message should be displayed in a way that makes it stand out or be easily noticed. It should not be buried in fine print or tucked away in an inconspicuous location. It should be placed where it catches the attention of the consumer or the recycler. Indelibly, 
the message should be marked or printed in a way that makes it permanent and resistant for, to fading or removal. It should not be easily erased, altered, or washed away. This ensures that the message remains visible and intact over time. So for glass and plastic, the message must be on the container body label or secondary label with a text height of 3 sixteenths inch, an inch or a minimum text height of 1 8 of an inch and in a contrasting color to the background and nearby text. Okay, so aluminum cans um, would be, the message must be on the top of the lid. Can lid tops over two inches in diameter, the message must be 3 sixteenths of an inch in height and can tops that are two inches or less in diameter, the message must be one eighth of an inch in height. So next slide, please. So here's some are some examples of basic CRV labeling messages we see. Um, on the far left is the message CA cash refund deposit in three sixteenths an inch in height. Um, the middle photo is the redemption message CA cash refund in one eighth of an inch in height in a contrasting color. And the far right photo is of the top can lid with the message CA CRV pro properly stamped. The message must be remain must remain visible. The message can be stamped on the part that it, it cannot be put on the part that pushes down because the recycler wouldn't be able to see it. Okay, next slide. So again, as mentioned on the other slide, here are some examples of approved labels, which are deemed to be clear and prominent. CR, CRV message should, be, should stand out, making the message easy to see and find a relation to other text on the label. The far left label example is the CACRV message in a minimum of 316 in inch in height and the right label is a CACRV message in one eighth of an inch in height with a surrounding box. Uh, both are clear and considered prominent. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, these are temporary labeling examples. Um, temporary labeling is just that. It means to be used for a limited duration of time. For example, temporary labeling must be needed for beverages imported into California without a message or items not labeled during bottling in 2024 and 2025. Other temporary options, including painting, scratch embossing, stickers are not allowed on can lids pursuant to California Code of Re Regulations uh, 2000A27. Indelibly means that the redemption message is permanently affixed on the beverage container from the point of purchase until the point of redemption and cannot be smeared or removed during regular use. The left label is a sticker and it meets the labeling requirements. Also, the right is an acceptable temporary option for the top can of the lid. It has an ink uh, jet stamp there that cannot be smeared or removed. Okay, next slide. So here are some examples of what not to do. Um, the top left label would have been correct with the CA cash refund message alone, but the five cents was, was included. No monetary value should be included on the label. The top right label with the CA CRV message is not prominent from the surrounding text. It is not easily found. The bottom left label with the CACRV has a sticker on the lid and this is not allowed. The bottom right label with the CACRV within a box is under the 1 8 inch of a height requirement. The text itself must be a minimum 1 8 of an inch in height if using a surrounding box. Okay, next slide, thank you. So CRV labeling reviews, um, PDF or, or J, JPEG digital images can be emailed. The best images um, are the die line artwork, proof sheets, 
and 300 ppi resolution that specifies the exact height width dimensions. Non-dye line images, including exact height and width dimension of the label, plastic containers, include additional picture of the resin code triangle. Aluminum cans include additional picture of the can lid and digital and lid diameter, excuse me. Next slide, please. Okay, so for CRV labeling and QR codes, Senate Bill 1013 allows QR codes to be used to meet the CRV labeling requirement either in a place or of or adjacent to the CRV message on the label. If using the QR code before the regulations are in place, the QR code must be clearly, prominently, and then doubly marked and permanently affixed to the container. When an individual opens the QR code, it must immediate, immediately take the consumer to one of the five approved messages without having to scroll. So either all of these five mentioned and we discussed before. So next slide. So CRV labeling and QR code proposed regulations. Uh, CalRecycle will be promulgating regulations for QR codes in 2024. Uh, please join our CalRecycle proposed regulations listserv for more information at www.w2. A dot, sorry, calrecycle.ca.gov uh, forward slash listserv s forward slash. So QR codes will be required to have a chasing arrow symbol in the indica or, or must have CACRV on the label adjacent to the QR code. Other proposals will be allowed for aluminum, glass, or bimetal beverage containers as long as they have a 50% recycling rate as found in most recent biannual report, January to June 2023 biannual report. Plastic containers must be compliant with post-consumer minimum content requirements to use the QR code. Include location for QR code by container type. Thank you, next slide. So for labeling assistance, please contact the registration units at area code 916-323-1835 or via email to reg.crvlabeling at calrecycle.ca.gov. Um, and we understand that there will be um, questions regarding box letter pouch. So thank you. Thank you so much for your time. We look forward to working with you and continuing to work with you. Now I pass it on to Shamila with the participant management units. Thank you for your time. So yeah, so uh, Shamila will take over next. She's gonna give us some information on account maintenance as well as reporting and payment basics. Um, she is the supervisor of the participant management unit. Thank you, Stacy. Good morning, everybody. Again, my name is Shamila. I'm the supervisor of the participant management unit. Um, as both Stacy and Rachel have mentioned, once you're company is registered as either a BM or, or beverage manufacturer or distributor and or distributor, it is housed with our, with our, our unit here. Next slide. Okay, the participant management unit and your account representative. Um, Stacy mentioned that once you are registered, you will be assigned a, an account representative, an actual human available for you uh, to answer any questions, um, they are your primary contact after registration. They will provide an introductory phone call to review reporting and payment responsibilities. They will assist you with the Division of Recycling Integrated Information System, the Doris Access, and provide you with any additional training needed. Next slide, please. Okay, um, once an introductory email is sent to you, you will be sent an electronic portal access request form that you will fill out to get um, access into the Doris reporting system. The purpose of it is to access the Doris system for reporting and payment of CRV and processing fees. Um, you Again, you will receive it, receive it after registration in an introductory email and will include the portal access request form. 
Um, once the request form has been submitted, the Doris Help Desk will send a username and password after the form is submitted so you can access the Doris system. Next. Here, um, I'm going to give a brief overview of reporting deadlines. For distributor reports and associated redemption payments, they must be received by the last day of the month following the month of sales. Beverage manufacturer reports and associated processing fees must be submitted by the 10th day of the second month following the month of sales. Um, in this white box here, uh, here's an example. For a distributor, you charge and collect CRB. For the January 2024 reporting and payment period, it is due February 29th, 2024. For the beverage manufacturer, you track sales and transfers. The January 2024 reporting and payment period is due March 10th, 2024. Thank you. Okay, Stacy, I think I'm going to go ahead and do the um, demonstration and I'll go back to the slide for, for contacts. All right, I'm gonna stop sharing. Okay, and then I will share. One second. Okay. So um, to begin with, uh, like I mentioned, once you are registered, is everybody seeing the um, search screen here? Stacy, are you seeing it? Okay, thank you. Once you are registered, um, you will be sent a link for the Doris system, but you can also use some search engines to search for the um, Doris website. So here I'm using Bing. Um, I've typed in Cal Recycle Reporting and Payment. And the first thing that pops up is reporting for, for reporting and payments for beverage manufacturers and distributors. If I click on that, it goes to um, the Cal Recycle webpage and you can log into Doris from there. Another way is to just type in Doris in your search engine and it says, welcome to Doris. And this takes you to the landing page for Doris. And here you'll see on this left-hand side, welcome to Doris. It shows you how to make online payments. It has an area for beverage manufacturers and distributors um, for information. It has our, the registration form there. It also has the beverage manufacturer and distributor reporting payment manual. So um, we'll be going over how to report and pay, but it's also in this manual. It has the PAR form, it has the rates and payment calendar and any other information. This area is for recyclers and processors who also use Doris for reporting. So once you are ready to enter Doris, you, will, you can click here or you can log in up here. So I'm going to do this. And this takes you to the portal where you will enter your username, which is your email address and your password. So I'm going to show you in a practice environment. So let me go here. As you've noticed, I'm in a practice environment here. It's very different from this one over here. Okay, so don't, you won't be typing in this web address. So here I have my username, Shamila at ABC Example Winery, and my password. So I'm gonna go ahead and log in. Oops, let's try this again. Sorry about that. That's what happens in a practice environment. So let me go into the link again. Okay. I'm going to enter my email address. And my password. All right, I am now logged in and I'm going to go ahead. I'm logged in under Doris Example Company, but I'm going to go ahead and change my preferences here to ABC Example Wine Company. I'll go over that um, 
at the end of this presentation because we're going to submit a report for them. Okay. So here I am, ABC Example Wine Company. It says, hello, Shamila Tooker. It has my BM ID for reporting processing fees and my distributor ID for reporting CRV. My account rep, you will actually have a person listed here and a phone number who will be your primary contact. We have the business address over here. We have the mailing address over here. The primary contact is myself and here is my phone number. And, and again, this is all for example purposes. The secondary contact is listed as Stacy Carter. In the middle of the screen, it's, it gives you kind of a, a, a mini account summary. So um, this company was actually registered um, you know, for practice purposes about a year ago. And it looks like they have eight missing beverage manufacturer reports and eight missing distributor reports. They also have a balance due of 38 cents for processing fees and a balance due of $17.22 for CRV, giving you a total of $17.60. This gives you an option to pay by mail. It, it gives you a voucher, which you can print out and mail a hard copy check, or you can pay online and it gives the, the link over here. Okay. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at um, the missing reports. Okay, so um, as you can see, I'm a representative reporting and paying on behalf, not on behalf, for two different companies. One company is called the Doris Example Company. The other company that I submit reports and payments for is the ABC Example Winery. So if I would like to, I would like to just look at the missing report periods for ABC Example Winery for their processing fees. And so you can run a, a, a mini report here and also um, see re what reports are missing. You can also click this button and export it into an Excel file for yourself. Okay, let's go back home. Okay, let's go over how to submit a beverage manufacturer report. So in this link tree, you'll see create a beverage manufacturer report or amend a beverage manufacturer report. So we'll be going over both processes. So let's create one. Okay, I'm going to be creating a beverage manufacturer report. So this is to be completed by a beverage manufacturer. You'll see up here, it has my account number. It has me choose the reporting year I'm going to report for. So for this report, I'm going to actually report for December of 2023. So you will need to report for the full month from the beginning of the month to the end of the month, from December 1st to the end of December. If you have nothing to report, you still must submit a report and click nothing to report. If you do not, you will receive a notice from us saying you have reports due. Okay, down here is where you will report your containers. Um, I'd like to point out this warning here that aluminum is not bimetal. There is no processing fee or aluminum, so you do not need to report it as far as processing fees are concerned. If you do um, manufacture a beverage in bimetal, you will need to report it. So today we're going, I push the uh, plus button here. I'm going to choose a container type. I'm going to choose glass. And I have sold in December of 2023. I have manufactured for sale in California, 100 glass containers. I can hit calculate. And it will show me, I'm sorry, my screen is large here. It will show me what the processing fee or unit fee is and how much I owe. So the total due is 45 cents. Down here, um, it gives a description of the interest rate, the interest rate at earned by pool money investment accounts, civil penalties of up to 15% of the amount due for payment may be assessed for each underpayment or late payment. 
In addition, civil pel penalties of up to $5,000 per day may be assessed for fail failure to report. Um, this is an electronic signature. Um, I certify that the facts presented here are true and correct to the best of my knowledge. So I will click agree. And click next. And here you see a summary of the report that I'm going to submit. Um, it gives, um, so it gives you an opportunity to review it before you actually click submit. So I'm going to go ahead and click submit. And here we are, my report has been submitted. And when I go back to home, you'll see that now I only have seven reports missing and my amount due has increased. Okay, so now I will go over how to submit a distributor report. Let's go ahead and click create distributor report. Okay, notice up here, it says create distributor report to be completed by a beverage distributor. The account number is DS329233.001. The reporting year that I'm going to report, uh, choose here is January, 2024, from the first of the month to the end of the month. Again, if I have nothing to report on my distributor report for that month, if I did not make any sales of CRV eligible containers, I will still need to log in and click nothing to report because you will be receiving a notice saying that you have reports due. Here in this section, um, Cal Recycle, the, the Division of Recycling is required to maintain data on refillable containers sold or transferred. So for, an, for example, if you're a winery that has a special program where customers can come in and buy a bottle, fill it and bring it back to you, um, you will need to record it here. And of course, those types of containers are not subject to CRV because um, in theory, they will not end up in the recycling uh, stream because they are brought back and refilled. Okay, so let's get to how to report here. So um, for January, 2024, um, I'm going to choose a container type. I have under 24 ounce containers. Okay, uh, for example, I might have glass under 24 ounces and I, and I distributed 100 glass containers for sale in California in January, 2024. You can go down here and calculate each section if you would like to, just to see. So CRV for containers under 24 ounces is five cents, totaling $5 that I will owe. 24 ounces in larger containers, and these will cover most of your wine containers, wine bottles, glass bottles. So let's go ahead. Let's say we distributed 100 wine bottles in 24 ounces and larger. You'll see that the CRV rate is 10 cents there giving you a total due of $10. Okay, and as Stacy spoke about, um, one of the new uh, containers that is in the program now that um, if you have wine and distilled spirits in a box, bladder, or pouch, the CRV, CRV rate is actually 25 cents now. So let's say ABC Wine Company and your drop down menu will only give you the option of the uh, bag box bladder pouch container. Let's say I distributed 100 of those containers as well, and I will calculate. Okay. So um, just to kind of go back a little bit, I wanted to go through the uh, drop down menu here. I forgot to do that. Um, notice that it has all the different container types here. So we do track each type of container within the processing fees and CRV. Okay, so you have a drop down menu to select what container type. All right, now we'll go back. So we owe $5 for containers under 24 ounces, $10 for 20, 24 ounces and larger, and $25 for the bog, bo, excuse me, box bladder and pouch containers. Now this is all for January 
of 2024 that I'm reporting. So you'll see a total of $40 down here, but um, the, the distributors are allowed a 1.5 um, administrative fee that is sub subtracted from the total due. So that totals to 60 cents. And so the total amount due is $39 and 40 cents. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and click my electronic signature again and hit next. Okay. Here's the summary page once again. So you can give it a quick review to see if this is actually what you want to report. If not, you can go back, hit edit report, and go back and change anything. But it looked fine to me. Okay, see, I forgot to sign it. It always asks you to do it, so I had that error. So let's go back. Okay, so now we're reviewing it. I signed it, it has my electronic signature of, as of today. And I'm going to click submit. I can go to a printable page if I would like to print it out. Okay, and let's go back home. Okay, so now you see my total balance due has increased because I submitted the January 2024 report. Um, you'll notice that it wasn't listed as a missing report because it's due February 29th. So, but my total account balance due is showing as increased. So now we will go back and show you how to do an amended report for beverage manufacturers. So I clicked amend report. So I have some reports in here that have already been filled out and I would like to go back and amend it. There could be various reasons that you need to amend your container count. For example, maybe you reported um, 100 containers for this was 2023, December of 2023. And you realize that actually 50 of them were actually ultimately sold out of state. So once again, you're only going to be reporting for what is sold in California. So um, in my case, as an example, my ABC wine company, I found out later on through transactions that I only had to report 50 containers. So um, I also want to point out here that I am typing in 50 containers because that is the amount that was actually sold in December of 2023 in California. I'm not putting a negative amount here. Um, it will not accept if you do a negative amount, it'll give you an error. So what you're putting here is the actual amount that you sold um, as your amendment. Um, the original amount I had put was 100 and now I have discovered it should have been 50. Okay, so I'm going to calculate that. It gives you the net difference and then it tells you what the actual amount due was. Um, what will happen is um, you have an account summary uh, that you will have access to that will show you how much is due and then what credits you have as well. Okay, so I'm going to hit agree, electronic signature and next. There's my review page again. I'm going to click submit. Okay. Let's go back home and uh, do a sample of an amended distributor report. Okay, so it shows me all of the reports that I have submitted once again that I would like to amend. So let's go to the one that we just created for January, 2024. Okay, let's say for example, I, um, you know, I, I entered in all my numbers and I thought it was all correct, but then I looked at looked back at some of my data and I actually ended up only, or I actually ended up selling 200 uh, uh, boxed wine containers. And so I am going to calculate that. So uh, my point is here in your amendments, you can go and enter in what the actual um, count should be. So you click calculate. Okay, and it gives you a new amount due. And then you would click I agree and hit next. And it gives you a summary again. And you can go home to see your landing page again. 
Okay, so you'll see here that the total amount due has been changing each time I've submitted a report or amended a report. Okay, so just to go through a little bit of these other link trees here, you can um, go through some of your info, uh, account information and history here. You can click missing reporting periods. Again, it takes you to that table. Um, again, it's showing all of the companies that I report and pay for. And you can sort it by different companies and it will show you. Okay. Um, this link here will show you your outstanding balances. Um, in a more detailed way. So here it shows you ABC example winery, the monthly, the report, the period, um, and then the amounts due and the balance. So sometimes you might have an amount due that you um, paid partial for and then a balance due on there. So it will give you all of that detail. Okay, here is the report history. And it shows you ABC Example Winery um, for 2024. I, I had a report that I submitted and then an amendment here, or excuse me, a report that I submitted for um, my BM account, the processing fees and the DS account. If I go to 2023 and I only wanted to look at the DS, I can go here and it will sort that for me. Okay. Okay, and then payment history. So 2024, I haven't made any payments in 2024 and nothing is due yet, so it's not showing. So let's look at 2023. I don't know why it's not showing. Again, this is a practice environment, so the data isn't all correct. So in any case, this should be showing all of the, um, the payment. Well, I haven't made new payments, and so it's not showing. Okay, excuse me there. And then your account history. Okay, here, um, ABC Example Winery, you'll see that um, I submitted a report, excuse me, for December of 2023. I went in and I did an amendment. So it shows as a DOR credit memo. It's given me a credit of 45 cents. So it showed my original uh, amount, it shows my amount due and then um, the credit that was that was implemented there. So you can scroll through here. You can also, you know, just do it by year and by ID. Um, and again, you can export this information into Excel. Okay, let's close that. Okay, Doris general preferences. Um, you'll see at the beginning of this demonstration, I went into change profile. Um, for example, um, we do our, we do have a lot of um, beverage manufacturers and distributors that are using consultants to do the reporting and payment of processing fees and CRV, and they have access to multiple companies. So here is the area where they can toggle back and forth um, to submit reports and payments. So I've been working in ABC Example Winery here. And now I would like to do reports for Doris Example Company. So I will click there and I'll go home. And it has landed on the Doris Example Company where I can also go through and submit or amend manufacturer and distributor reports. You'll see Doris Example Company has 12 reports due. So it's not showing a total account balance due because I haven't reported anything yet, but it is showing missing reports. Okay, that concludes my presentation of the Doris system. So I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing. Okay. All right, so let's see. I'm gonna put this back up for just a second. 
Right, hopefully you guys can see the uh, contact information there. Yes, Shamila? Yes, I can. Okay. I'll leave this up for just a second. Um, the PowerPoint presentation in a PDF form is available online at our website. Um, you can download it so you can look at this later. Um, we are recording this portion of it and it will be published at some point, hopefully early next week. I don't know the exact date, but it will be available on our website as well. So uh, feel free to reach out to us if you have questions.